Howdy there folks, John Shelton with Victory Riders, Texarkana, USA. I'm going to do a 50,000 mile review today of my 2016 60th anniversary Yamaha Super Tenere. So come along on this journey, I appreciate it, and uh, excuse the wind, and it might be shaking a little bit because it's 37 degrees and uh, very windy today. But I've got this review, I need to go ahead and get started. So guys, what I wanted to go ahead and do is just tell you a little bit about my Super Tenere. This thing was already customed by a much older gentleman down in Central Texas. And I'll take it off the stand here in a minute. Beautiful bike. Love everything about this bike. And when I say everything, I mean everything. So we're actually here in my backyard. I just got back home from a men's breakfast. Dressed in my CMA attire. Um, I am the vice president um, at this time of Victory Riders out of Texarkana, USA. Texarkana, Arkansas, Texarkana, Texas. But today, it's about my Tenere, and I know I'm going to have to just stay focused on the camera so you can hear me. I don't have all the fancy mic booms and all that good stuff. That might be coming this year, but it's all about the Tenere. I'm actually trading it. Stick to the end of the video. I'll tell you what I'm trading it on, but let me tell you a few things about it. So first off, I just do want to say the bike has performed flawlessly for three years. I blew out a rear bearing last year when I was up in Eureka Springs on the way there I was all pig trail all the way up um, and uh, got to the campground click 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 I thought I broke something in the drive shaft um, put it up on the center stand rotated the thing and all of a sudden it was just clank 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 it was awful uh, didn't get to ride none while I was up there up there at a rally uh, last March or May and uh, so anyway uh, ended up having the guy was nice enough uh, to trailer me home. I rented a U-Haul and he trailered me all the way back to Atlanta, Texas. It's actually where I live. And uh, got it to the Yamaha dealer here and thank goodness it was only a bearing. So, um, wasn't drive shaft. So anyway, let me talk about some of the things that I absolutely love about the bike. The ergonomics. Now this bike already had the Russell Daylong seat on it. And so as you can see, when I'm sitting here, I'm 6'3", and as I'm sitting on the bike, my knees are in a downward position. Um, I also have the ability on this bike to stand up. It's got risers, as you can see. Nice position. I'm not leaned over the thing. Now, of course, when I'm off-road riding, I'm not on the center stand, so I've got to be careful. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm off road riding, I bend the knees, tuck them in here to the side of the tank. Um, and in this position, so it's perfectly, perfectly, uh, nicely balanced. Uh, Got to make sure I'm on my center stand. Not center stand, but uh, my, my, my little mud stopper here. The bike came completely set up with this dashboard, handlebar, risers. Um, only thing that I added on it was neon, yellow neon lights and Oxford heated grips. Uh, this is a 2016 model, so it didn't come with the nice uh, uh, electronic suspension, unfortunately. But I've heard a lot of people on the internet talk about, oh, I had it, you got to turn all the, the, the traction control off, you got to put it on the center stand. No, I don't. I, I, got, I got a button right here, traction control system, as long as you're in neutral. Uh, you push that button and turn traction control off for off-road. So I'm not quite understanding. Now the analog brake still, uh, that's, that's something, but like I said, I'm, I don't do major extreme. I've done all kind of roads up in Arkansas, uh, up near the, oops, up near the um, Wolfpin Gap. Had four-wheelers pull up beside me, side by side, looking at me like I was insane. Because uh, the bike does not look like an off-road bike. Now, again, in reason, okay, um, I'm not Charlie Borman. As you can see out here, I don't know how much you can see, I can go ride any of my stuff right here in the back as long as I stay away from the creek bottom. 
anything soft, this is a 600 pound motorcycle. Bottom line, my KLR, um, first time when I took off on it, I lived in McLeod, Texas, took off uh, and, and, and that was all sand. Found out real quick that KLR is awfully heavy. Um, the DRZ 400 was my favorite off-road bike of all time. Uh, I know there's so many choices nowadays. Uh, but again, guys, this is not a dual sport. So when I hear people say, oh, it's a dual sport, you're riding them dual sport. No, no, no. Um, you can call this an adventure bike, but you know what? The word adventure is a very big word. So they've taken this ADV, of course I'm wearing ADV gear, as they call it, CMA actually sell this, CMA, this is actually a CMA jacket and pant. Um, but basically, adventure is whatever you make it. So back to the bike. I may talk myself out of, tra out, out of trading, you know. I've already put a thousand dollar deposit down on a bike. Stay to the end, I'll tell you what I'm getting. And, uh, I did not choose to go with another Tenere, and the reason being, they made no updates. Exact same bike it's been for, I think, pushing a decade. I might be wrong here. Y'all help me out here. But, but I, I think it's 2012, 13, all the way to current. There, there's really, I mean, maybe some little tiny technical changes, but not much. Um, that's kind of one thing. The bike is underpowered. Now, this bike here came with a Commander. This bike came with uh, the exhaust on it. Uh, has a Yoshimura exhaust on it, a full exhaust system, not just a, not just a muffler tip. Um, all these accessory lights and stuff. So this bike runs pretty hot in the sport mode. The It has two modes, touring, sport. I call it old man mode and sport. Is the way I look at it because what ends up happening is when you're in touring mode, it is a lug. Phone's gonna turn over here. Uh, it's really, really slow. Uh, throttle response is sluggish. Everything's very sluggish. But then, unfortunately, whenever you put it on sport mode, it's just very, it's very, very jerky. Um, that's one of the complaints I have with this bike. Second complaint I have with this bike is as it's out idling, it sounds like my tractor. So it's got this horrible, it, when, it took me a long time when I first got it, I thought for sure the valves were coming out of it. Um, I'd go by a mechanic shop, a Yamaha shop, or a friend of mine that works on bikes and be like, dude, are you sure? He said, no, man, that, that's just the way that motor sounds. Um, so basically, it, it, it's just been bulletproof. Um, Top heavy, okay, let's talk about that. So I went from a 650 V-Strom, fully decked out, had every tour tech option you could get on it. Again, that was another old man bike that only had 400 miles on it when I bought it. Um, every accessory you could think of known to man. But I went from that 650 V-Strom to this. Now the power was just stupid, but the first elephant in the room I had to overcome was the top heavy weight that I had to contend with. Um, I already knew that going in. When I when I found this bike, I was not looking for a Super Tenere whatsoever when I found this bike, but uh, I was working College Station, saw the bike on Cycle Trader, thought, oh, it's only two miles from my hotel. I go look at it. I like the yellow. And then whenever uh, the guy handed me the keys and had me go right around the block, I came back and I said, I want this bike. And... Uh, rented a trailer and brought her home so again i've loved it um i guess i'm going to go ahead and crank up a couple of things on here show you a couple of things with a super tenere you have to wait on everything to get done or when you go to crank it it won't crank and it'll backfire and sound like a gun went off and scare everybody to death scare you to death the first first time that happened to me i thought i'd blow the motor up
the rear back here, and I was going to show that and everything, but I guess there's really no need in it. I just noticed it, but uh, I've noticed how loud the bike's been getting, and then all of a sudden, uh, I'm cleaning the bike. I don't wash it real often. I kind of wipe the tank off and the mirrors off and the windshield off, and I just kind of uh, I ride it, put it up wet, and uh, get back on it and ride it again. But uh, started melting around the license plate holder over there, and I'm pretty sure I know when that was. That was a pretty uh, a night I was running with a bunch of sport bike guys, and uh, uh, I remember they were laughing, talking about there were flames coming off of it, uh, off the exhaust pipe every time I would turn it off. So anyway, um, family's coming home. I'm doing a video on the bike, so they're looking at me like I'm crazy. So what I wanted to, uh, I guess, explain on this is just what a great bike it's been. And uh, like I said, 50,000 miles. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the stand and show you a few things. So this one, I said it came set up. The lights on here are just ridiculous bright. Uh, I put the Dunlops on. I absolutely love these. These are the Dunlop Missions. Um, first time I'd had them, I bought them last October, specifically for going to Colors Rally um, for Christian Motorcycle Association and did the Wolfpin Gap and all that area. But the Dunlops has performed very, 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 very well. Um, I will say this, as you can see, get over here toward the chicken strips. We did a ride all over that area up there. I got to ride with some other sport bike guys again. And we, uh, I found out real quick that these tires don't hold like my other tires did. And uh, so don't be doing 80 in a corner. That's a 20 mile an hour corner with these unless the tires are nice and warm. That was again cold weather. Shame on me. Uh, you may notice my big ugly seat. That is a Russell Daylong seat. Came on the bike. I've never owned one because they're $700. So I've never owned one, but it can, this bike came with it. And see, it's the 60th anniversary. Oh, I'll show you the melt here. See where it's melting. <laughs> So you see where the pipe's tucked away up in there. Um, I wish it did come out a little bit further. But uh, it came set up with all this. Um, I love this. This is where, I don't know if you can see it up in there. It's kind of very well hidden. So this is my air compressor, tire patch kit, and jump box. So I have to take two screws off. It's completely hidden up in there. Nobody even knows it's there. So... You know, these, these, these boxes break easy, so somebody could break into the boxes, so you don't want anything um, in there uh, if you're a hotel or something like that, which I count, so very seldom at a hotel on this bike. I'm usually camping. Got several of the videos, all the different luggage that I've tried. Uh, the Lone Rider just works best. But anyway, back to this bike. Uh, this is where the battery compartment is. Uh, it came with this battery that's in it. Um, all I can say is it's never been on a trickle charger a day in its life. I don't own a trickle charger. It actually parks on the back porch right there is where it parks. Um, the only time the bike has never started when it was 8 degrees here um, last month in January. And I uh, went out there to go start it and it would not start. But anyway, so I know it's kind of a long video. I don't think I've ever done a video this long before in my life. Oh, I was going to show the mileage because some people will be like, well, how do I know it's at 50,000 miles? I was going to do a video. I planned on doing it when it hit 50,000 miles. Well, we were on a big group ride. There it is, 50,366. So 4,709 on trip two and 1,786 on trip one. Um, trip one is tires. I just want to put this, so I got 1,700 miles on these tires. That's in October. Um, trip two, I think that's oil change. I'd have to look in my book. But basically, uh, uh, I, I have no complaints. And it's just a nice bike. Pretty bike. Man, I'm about to talk myself out of trading. So, now to...
back to what we were talking about. So I've been looking at the Pan Americas for three years. Um, before that, um, when I first got the first peak of it, like most of us before COVID, uh, got the peak of it, and I thought it was the best looking ADV bike ever made. The first thing, it's going to get loud, the train's coming. Uh, the first thing that I noticed was like this bike. This bike kind of has a little buggy point up here on the front. It's okay, but it ain't got a beak. I can't stand a beak on a bike. Uh, my V-Strom had it. Mm, okay, whatever. Um, I have rode, I have rented a BMW in Canada. Did uh, 1,400 miles on a GS. Absolutely love the bike. Um, no doubt, but I have no dealer within four hours of me. So that's that's a that's a big deal. Um, price tag, that was another big deal for me. And I've been on the Pan America forum now for two years, and I've read the horror stories. Um, continue to read guys have horror stories. But here's the thing about me. Yes, I do research. Yes, I look at this. But I also am in the field. I am an active rider. This bike has 50,000 miles on it. I've only had this bike three years. I put 40,000 miles on this bike in three years. So it, it, it's like, listen, I ride. And I'm out here and I meet these riders. And I'm just going to put it to you this way. I've only met one PA rider that hated his bike. But he came from a fully loaded dresser electrical. Then several of the guys that I've talked to that's claimed, I don't know, I didn't see them on it, claimed they had one and they only had it a couple of months and got rid of it, also were on big dressers complete polar opposites and uh, so there again I also am on the BMW GS form and the past two years on that form has been electronic gremlins like crazy uh, so everything can have its issues uh, the other thing I have been noticing is people that have had the biggest problem with them were the 21's of course first year Harley came out with it I, I, I wouldn't even consider buying a first year bike then uh, the other issue that um, they started looking and looking at numbers was they were built on Fridays. Um, my dad taught me as a kid, never, ever, ever buy a vehicle made, made a, he said Monday or Friday, but, uh, but anyway, uh, especially on a Friday. So anyway, let me tell you why I chose to go with a Pan America. I've already put the money down. Um, they are giving me a tremendous trade-in. I am extremely happy. Basically, I'm getting almost what I paid for this bike three years ago. Um, Harley has got a lot of Pan Americas sitting in showrooms. It's, it's a 23 model I'm getting. Um, I'm not going to tell you the price of it, but it's ridiculous. Uh, I see 23s all day long. Uh, and I like the yellow one, of course, but the one I'm getting is not. But So I'm going to either paint it or wrap it. I've got to go. i got an estimate on both right now. So, um, But anyway... Um, I see them advertised all day long for 18. The brand new 24 is gonna be starting, and it's a special, it's gonna be starting at 19. Of course, the CVO is gonna be starting at 28. Uh, and before people choke on the 28 price tag, you need to look and see everything that it's got from skid plates and and um, already comes with the boxes, upgraded seats, you know, those kind of things, typical CVO stuff, but, but you're also gonna pay for that name, um, CVO. But, uh, Mine is a special that uh, that I that I didn't say I, uh, well, I didn't order it. It's basically I put a down payment on it. Walked into uh, the dealership and I'll do a video after I get it where I bought it from and so forth um, later. But anyway, I was working over in Louisiana and uh, walked in, saw the bike all tricked out. Assumed it was used because uh, um, it was all tricked out. Windshield, just you, you name it, it's on the bike. And uh, and then. Uh, the, the sales lady came up and, and said something and said, oh, no, that's, that's new. This, this isn't a used bike, and it was kind of tricked out by the owner, and he thought he was going to keep it, blah, 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 blah. Um, long story short, um, 
they went back and forth for about a week, I guess. We went kind of back and forth on a few things, and and uh, this bike's paid for, and, and, and I've never bought a new bike other than a dirt bike years ago, brand new. Everything has always been uh, called garage clean, no mileage, already tricked out bikes. Um, but with the Pan America, I was a little concerned with that because, yes, there has been issues. So, therefore, um, I was worried about getting a used bike without that nice warranty. So, anyway, long story short, um, I've laid the money down, and I had to do the video today on a nice cold day. Um, we had a men's breakfast at Church on the Rock in Texarkana this morning at 9. It was uh, 34 degrees when I left the house this morning. Um, and I got back home a little after lunchtime. Uh, road all over some back road areas I enjoy, but, but basically back to this bike. Um, Sire Nora, I'm going to miss the crap out of it. I love the looks. Um, I love the, the, just the reliability of this bike. I'm hoping and praying that uh, HD doesn't let me down. I hadn't been on a Harley in uh, 17 years. Uh, so anyway, back to the Tenerife. If you're thinking of this style bike. I call this to redneck people all the time. Oh, is that a GS? And, and uh, all over the place, man. Every, every, everywhere I've been in the country. Uh, oh, is that a GS? No, this is the redneck GS, as I call it. And uh, it's it's the, the the redneck version, the country version, the the it's shaft drive. Oh my God, I can't I can't say enough about the bike. Uh, I wish Honda would come back with the Cross Tour or the. Uh, 1200X loved that bike, but no cruise control. That, that, anyway, the, right before I bought this one, I, 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 that that was going to be the bike because the way it, it rode, the way it looked, it looked different than any, everything else on the market. Did not look, didn't have a beak. Um, loved the bike, something that looks different. So anyway, uh, if you're thinking of a bike and you want low maintenance shaft drive and you want to dabble around on fire roads, gravel roads, back roads, um, you want a bike that you can ride the crap out of, put it up wet, ride it hard and put it up wet, get back on it in two days without being on a trickle charger and fire the bike up and go, this is the bike. So um, no doubt, absolutely no doubt. Um, you, you, you can see these on the market all day long, low, low miles. I see them for $8,000, extremely low miles. Um, we're talking about, you know, six, seven, eight thousand miles. Um, there was a whole bunch on Cycle Trader that I saw all around the seven, eight thousand dollar range that, that, that had no miles. Um, probably was an old guy bike like me. The bike, uh, now this bike has been off road. This bike, uh, this bike has probably done, I would say probably nine, ten thousand miles of gravel roads. I live on a gravel road. Um, so, um, but all, you know, getting out there as long as it's, it's, it's packed, this bike's capable. Steep, steep hills and big rocks, this bike is capable. But, uh, but buddy, if I, like over here at the creek bottom, if I, I were to go through my little gate over here to where uh, goat paddock number one is over here and get anywhere near that creek on this bike, guess what, I'm stuck. So, um, bittersweet. All the camping I've done on this bike, I have videos and pictures. Every time I'd take off, I'd pop a willy. I had so much gear stacked up. Um, the last time, my ice chest sat right here. And uh, that last October, because I was packed for a week, even brought all my own food for a week, so the bike has performed flawlessly. Um, again, getting to the air breather on this bike over here, it, it's, it's, um, it's hard. I don't think it's gonna be hard as the PA is. Uh, battery's easy to get to on this bike, but I've never had to. Um, got a big accessory block on it. This thing got so many accessories on it, it's retarded. Um, so anyway, I love the bike. And I uh, almost bought another one, but uh, they didn't do any updates, and uh, I really, really wanted wanted some updates and a little more power. Um, the type of riding that I like to do is twisties. That's my favorite type of riding, absolutely. Interstate, any of these big highways, Highway 59, oh, God, I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. All my cruiser buddies, hey, man, we're going to go. Well, what route are we taking? Oh, 59, why? You know, well, come on, let's go to the back. And anyway, you know, that's a whole other thing. 
Um, so Twisties, uh, I, I, I've got some videos out there. Unfortunately, it's just from my cell phone, so they're terrible. Um, I'm maybe getting me a 360 coming up soon, I hope. But uh, the bike is a Twisty monster. It, it'll do anything I want to do. I've done the tail of the dragon. Got some photos and pictures. Uh, well, pictures of that. I didn't have video back then. Um, and uh, I went in November. Uh, nobody there. Uh, just sport cars. Uh, my picture at uh, Killboy's store down there. Uh, wasn't a soul there but me. And uh, two, uh, 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 one guy in a Ferrari and one guy in a McLaren. Uh, but anyway, it was great. I got the sandwich in between those guys. Got to ride the Dragon five times, uh, do it as hard as I wanted. Um, absolutely amazing. This bike performed perfectly, flawlessly on that. Um, also, about midways on the Dragon up there, uh, Tennessee, right up there at the North Carolina border, there, there is a one-way gravel road that takes off. I did it, so when I left that area, I did the gravel road and left out of there. It's a one-way road. I want to say it took me about two and a half hours. Um, so that was cool. So I get to go do the dragon, tail of the dragon, and then left the dragon on a gravel road. You ain't doing that on many bikes. So uh, anyway, again, my Tenere is great. I love it. Over 50,000 miles, super reliable. I think a good looking bike doesn't look like everything else on the road, which I like. And uh, anyway, it's very bittersweet. So my next video will be the new bike and hopefully it'll be a joyous video. Um, so anyway, John Shelton, um, Victor Riders out of Texarkana, USA, signing out. You have a good day.